Here I'm going to show you how to use the switch function. It's a newer function for later versions of Excel, and essentially it replaces very basic versions of nested if statements or if functions. And so it allows you to check a value and return a different result based off of that value. And I'll show you how to use this guy, and then I'll show you some of the older ways to do it with the if statement and with the choose statement or the choose function and if function, which work a little bit different. Now make sure to download this file, link to it will be in the description of this video. That way you can follow along and have all of the examples. And don't forget to subscribe and click the little bell icon to get notifications for all of my new tutorials. The more of you that subscribe, the more tutorials I can make. Now let's go ahead and have a very simple good, okay, bad, and not allowed output using the switch function. The syntax is very easy, equals switch. And the expression is what you want to check. So I want to check this value. Usually it's going to be a cell reference. And then for your argument list, it's kind of interesting. So what do you want to match? Well, here I would like to match a one. Now, what do I want to output if it is a one? Well, let's go ahead and output good. And then next up, what do you want to match again? I'd like to match a two. And comma, next argument, what do you want to output with that match? O. Okay. And it goes on like this for, I believe, 126 matching pairs or something like that. So you can have a lot of checks here. And let's round out three with bad. And it's really nice at the very, very end, if you want a default value, just have the last value there with nothing to match. And then that is the default value right there. And that's why these arguments say default or value for. And we are done, so close that guy up, hit enter, and copy it down, and there you go. Now you don't just have to check numbers, you can check text, but they have to be exact matches. And that's why I said it replaces very basic nested if statements, because you can make powerful checks with nested ifs using the or function and the and function and greater than and less than. Here it has to be an exact match. But that is really all there is to it. Now I'm going to show you some other ways to do the exact same thing that we did here, because this may not be the best option every time. So let's go ahead and use the old method, the original one, nested if statements. This one, it really is a pain, if I'm honest. But it's kind of fun to see how, how we used to have to do it. So equals if, and what's our first test? If this guy equals one. What do I want to do? Let's output good. But also, this is where you would have flexibility. So you can make any kind of check that you want, not just a if this exactly equals this value check. And I have many examples of that in other if statement tutorials. I'll put a link in the description of this video. So if a15 equals one, good. All right, if it does not, if, you need another if, this guy equals two, then I think that one was okay. And another if, this guy equals three, then bad. It's very, very difficult to manage this and not get confused. And for the default value, just the very last value if false, and then close one, two, three if statements. And some people will have 10 or 20 of these in one cell. So that is when switch really becomes handy. And now another one I want to show you, which may not be as obvious, is the choose function. This is a really, really great function, but the thing about it is that everything has to be in order. So let's go equals choose, and it works with simple numbers only. So what we have here is an index number argument and then the values that you want to output. So if index number is one, then we get red. If index number is two, then we'd get blue. That's how this guy works. So one returns red, and then two returns the second value, which is blue. So even less flexible than switch, but this is very, very helpful. I use it a lot to generate random values, actually. So let's make this the index number, and then we'll go good, okay, for number two, and then three is bad. 
And there is no default value here. So when you use choose, you aren't thinking, hey, I want to have a default value usually. So we will just put this guy not allowed for place four. And copy it down. And there you go. But now there is one more thing that you can use in place of switch. And you may have noticed that this seems awfully like a VLOOKUP or just a lookup. So if we, let's go ahead and add some more space right here. And we will copy these guys. And then copy them again, put them over here. Alt E S V enter for copy paste special values and make that bold. All right. So that's our lookup table. And even though it's not required, I am really trying to get everyone in the habit of turning all of these kinds of little tables into a real table in Excel. So let's turn that into a table. And maybe we can rename it. It's a very good idea to do that. TBL for table. And maybe we call it output. Table output. And then down here, equals VLOOKUP. And this is a standard lookup. You could use any kind of lookup. The point is we are getting our values from this table in order to output here based on what is here. And you may know there are about a million different kinds of lookups and different things you can do with them. But here we want a very simple one. So our lookup value, what do we want to look for? Number one, okay. Table array, so where do we want to look? Right here, table output. Makes it so much easier to read when you give it a nice name and make it a table. And now column index number, from which column should we return a value? Let's go with number two, the output column. And range lookup, how about false for an exact match? And hit enter, and there we go. Now what you may want to do here to get the default, well, let's remove this guy, delete, table row. Now we have an error. So what we can do is to wrap this in if error and then go to the end. What do we want if there is an error? Not allowed. And with VLOOKUPs, you do not just have to have an exact match, but we're going to leave it at that here or else this tutorial will very, very quickly get out of hand <laughs> because I have many lookup examples that I enjoy showing. So here we have a VLOOKUP version of that. And you may be saying, hey, there's a lookup table here now. That's a lot more effort than I want to use for this. But it really just depends on the situation because this is very simple. So you may say, OK, great. When am I going to use that? And honestly, you may never want to use switch because there are all of these alternatives. So switch is handy. It can be useful. But to be honest with you, I do rarely use it because the moment your data set gets even remotely complex, life becomes much easier to use this kind of setup right here, where you can very quickly and easily see the values that are going to be output and change them. So good can become better, and it will automatically be updated here. We do not need to update every single formula for it to be updated. And I think I'm going to leave this tutorial there. I did not mean to introduce you to Switch and then tell you not to use it. I just wanted to let you know that there are many ways to do this, and Switch is a nice little addition to the toolkit. And make sure to download this file so you get these examples, and like and subscribe, and click the little bell icon to get notifications of all my new tutorials.